in this long video we're going to talk about um, elimination substitution reactions and I'm just going to describe how to decide whether reaction is going SN1, SN2, E1 and E2. So the first thing you want to know is the type of substrate that you have whether it's primary, secondary, tertiary. We're going to talk about that soon. And again, the type of nucleophile that you have, whether it's only a nucleophile, whether it's a strong nucleophile, a weak nucleophile, strong base, weak base. These ones that are listed here are only nucleophiles. So typically, they should only do substitutions. So this only gives you SN, SN1 or SN2. That tells you you have to look at the substrate. You know, SN2 doesn't like sterics. So it's going to go best with a less hindered substrate, which is primary and SN1 will win where you have a hindered substrate which is tertiary because they tend to give a tertiary carbocation. We'll talk much about that later. Now here, SN2 will win for the secondary substrate if you're in polar aprotic solvent, but SN1 tends to win if you are in a polar protic solvent. We'll talk about that again the next page. So for the next summary, strong bases include OR group, OH group. The R group could be an alkyl group, for example, CH3O minus. It could be an OET minus, an ethoxide. Okay, it could be an ethoxide. It could be a bulky base, a tart butoxide. Those are R groups. Now the OH in these first two alkoxides are small, so those ones will tend to give you a mix of SN2 and E2, especially with a secondary substrate. And if you have the bulky one, bulky base is going to give you E2, or if your substrate is bulky, bulky which means it's sterically hindered, then SN2 is not going to happen, instead you're going to have E2. But why are we looking at this chart summary? Why are we just talking about E2 and SN2? It's because these pieces are strong nucleophiles. They are strong nucleophiles. Then you should see some substitution. And you're not going to see SN1 because again SN1 goes with weak nucleophiles. We're going to talk about that. SN2 always competes E2 because both of them have um, they both SN2 and E2 have one transition state. That's why they compete. They are concerted reactions. But elimination gives you double bond, substitution gives you displaced or substituted products. Now, for primary substrate, if you have this one of these guys, for primary substrate, the SN2 will win because, again, the primary substrate is less hindered. Only when you're using uh these groups but where the where your where your nucleophile is bulky which means if you're using a tat butoxide which is this guy it will be the major sn2 might might not be seen all right here these guys most common ones that are used in organic chemistry these are bases only so if they're bases only you expect no nucleophiles and that therefore no substitution. Now, if there's no substitution, then you're looking at elimination, but you have E1 and E2. Why are we not showing E1 here? Again, because these guys are bases only and they're strong bases. E1 will go with weak bases. So E2 dominates as the only product the product you get is going to be only from E2. DBN is this guy here, 1,5-diazobicyclo-4,3-O, non-5-in. That's the structure of DBN. Okay. And finally, the last one. Here you have weak nucleophile, weak bases. Now you don't even going to, you're not going even to expect much of SN2 because again, SN2 requires strong nucleophiles 
and again you're not going to expect much of e2 because again e2 requires strong bases we have here the opposite of what i've just stated so sn2 and e2 uh, products are gonna not, are not going to be seen much in all these substrate primary secondary tertiary now let's talk about the primary one for the primary one I've said this guy is weak nucleophile, so it's not gonna do SN2. And again, E2 needs a very strong base. These are not strong bases, so you know you're not going to see um, much of this SN2 and E2. Now, why are you not going to see why are you not going to see any E1 or SN1 with the primary substrate? The reason is because if you have a primary substrate, say like this, it's going to give you a primary carbocation, and you know, primary carbocation are not stable. E1 and SN1 always go through formation of a carbocation. You have to form the carbocation. That's the very determining step, it's the slow step. Now, if the carbocation is not stable, especially formed from the primary substrate, like from this primary alkyl halide then you're not going to see E1 and SN1. That's why the only option written here is SN2 and E2. And as I said, even still SN2 and E2, and as I said, still SN2 and E2 are not going to be much of a success. Okay? Because these guys are weak nucleophile, weak base. We need a strong nucleophile for SN2. We need a strong base for E2. For secondary substrate is a mixture and it's just not practical. Uh, uh, it's just not um, practical to get pure products. You get a mixture of all SN1, E1, SN2, E2. Now for tertiary substrate, for example, this guy here, once it leaves, you're going to get a tertiary carbocation that's stable. So you expect E1 and SN1 and um, SN1 mostly wins over E1 most of the time, but studies have shown that whenever you have a higher temperature, then much of E1 will start showing up and SN1 becomes a minor. So if there's no e heat specified, only think SN1 with the tertiary. So that's the summary, too much talking, but let's now go specifically to examples. But before that, I'm going to explain to you what primary secondary tertiary substrates are okay okay right here is a classification of substrate this guy is primary uh sorry this guy is tertiary because the that carbon bearing the halogen is bordered by three other carbons so it's tertiary now this carbon here bearing bonded to the halogens bond is bordered by two carbons so this is secondary and this carbon bonded to the halogen is only bordered by or is only bonded to one other carbon this is primary and that tells you again using the same formation this is secondary and on the chair you have three other carbons here bonded to the carbon bearing the halogen so this is tertiary now in terms of for alcohols is the same old story the carbon bonded to the OH which should leave again like the chloride would leave in the mechanism is bonded to three other carbons so this is tertiary this carbon right here is bonded to two other carbons so that's a secondary substrate is a secondary alcohol and of course this is guys bonded to only one other carbon is a primary alcohol and this is a tertiary alcohol because you have three carbons surrounding now let's draw a parallel of SN1 and SN2 before we do examples. To remind you, SN2 doesn't like sterics, so this is the ranking. Primary substrates will be more reactive than tertiary substrates. SN1 gonna like sub, uh, tertiary substrates because that tend to give tertiary carbocations which are more stable and primary carbocations will typically not exist much will have short life so you don't see sn1 in sn2 there's a backside attack the backside attack leads to inversion of configuration in sn1 both back and front attack on the carbon happens and that leaves 
leads to racemic mixtures. Okay. Now, SN2, SN2 prefers good nucleophiles. SN1 is gonna most likely go with modern nucleophiles like H2O, which are just neutral. SN2 most likely is gonna be negatively charged. Okay. Well, SN1 is going to be neutral like water, methanol, etc. Okay. So, no carbocation for SN2, always forming carbocation for SN1 and E1. This is unimolecular, that's why it's SN1. That means only one species determines the rate, which is the electrophile. And this is bimolecular, that's why we have the two, which means the nucleophile and the electrophile determines the rate and the rate is given by a rate constant multiplied by the concentration of nucleophile concentration of electrophile now let's go to examples and decide whether reaction is going to go e1 sn1 e2 sn2 classify the reaction that will give the major product out of the following reaction and also show how the minor products are formed and state by what mechanism all right so the first one this guy from your charts again that's a nucleophile only so if it's a nucleophile only i'm thinking sn2 and again this is a primary substrate this carbon is only bonded to another carbon so i'm expecting the reaction here to be sn2 for the mechanism the nucleophile just uses its lone pair to attack this carbon because that carbon is bonded to an electron negative electron drawing group so it's partially positively charged that's why we're attacking it and the chloride leaves so you're gonna end up with this product stereochemistry is not defined so it's hard to show inversion and this is the only product only product by SN2 Again, this is nucleophile only. See, it's right here. It's nucleophile only. Okay. Now for the next one is SH. It's also nucleophile only. And stereochemistry is defined. Since it's nucleophile only, I'm predicting SN2. This is a secondary substrate. The carbon is bonded to two other carbons. So backside attack for SN2 according to the rules, leading to inversion of configuration. So the SH ends up with the opposite bond. This is a wedge, that's a hashed wedge. Okay. Okay, in this question, my focus is not on the counter ion, my focus is on this group here. Okay. Characterize it is a strong base, strong nucleophile according to the summary I gave you. So it's strong base and strong strong nucleophile. So I would expect it either to give me E, E2 or SN2 because SN2 likes strong nucleophile, E2 likes strong base. Now looking here, you have a primary substrate, primary alkyl halide. So looking at the chart for primary alkyl halides where you have uh, small nucleophiles like OH-, minus, then SN2 should win. If we had butoxide, then E2 will win and SN2 will be the minor or it will not show up. So here I'm going to go SN2 and I'm going to use this to attack the carbon that has partial positive charge because it's bonded to an electron drawing group and these leaves, I'm showing the mechanism. The stereochemistry is not defined so I'm just going to show it like that and this is from SN2. Now let's show the E2 minor how it's going to be formed. So I'm going to draw it in blue down here to explain how the minor is formed. So if if the OH does not act as a nucleophile like we've done there up there to do SN2 to give the major, then it plays a role of a base if it's not playing the role of a nucleophile. So if it plays the role of a base, then you have to steal a hydrogen from a better carbon, a beta carbon, which is a carbon bonded to, a, to the carbon bearing the halogen. Let me just say it's 
beta carbon is the neighboring carbon to the carbon bearing the halogen. So it's acting as a base. Bases uses the lone pairs to accept a hydrogen. So we're removing that hydrogen and using this bond to make a double bond there in these leaves. So that gives us an elimination product. So you're gonna end up with a double bond which comes from E2. And of course, you will have H2O and you have sodium bromide. H2O comes from whenever OH accepted the hydrogen. Sodium bromide is from Na plus and Br that left. So the, the byproduct here is gonna be this, which comes from E2 and it's gonna be the minor. Right? So the next problem, this is potassium tetrabutoxide, which is this guy here. So whenever that's used, I told you on primary substrates, E2 is going to be the major because now this guy here is bulky. It's bulky. And if it's bulky, it's sterically hindered. And you know, SN2 doesn't like sterics. So SN2 becomes the minor if you use this base. Now, if you're using it, that base, which is strong base and bulky, then again you're stealing a better hydrogen yeah which is the acidic hydrogen in this case and then pushing arrows forward if the hydrogen is taken off the bond has to be transferred in between here and the halo beer leaves so the major product is just gonna be the alkene from e2 okay this time E2 becomes the major because you used a bulky base and then the minor is gonna be the minor is going to be from SN2 that is if it happens right and how do you get the minor just drawing it the, pushing the arrows in red you're going to use one of these lone pairs to attack this carbon in the living group leaves and that's how you form the minor that I'm circling in red okay all right let's do another example so on here you have a secondary substrate on here you have a secondary substrate and uh, this is a strong base strong nucleophile see it's all ch3 so this is all minus if you go back to the chat it's an r o minus see that r is a ch3 so it's strong base strong nucleophile you have a secondary substrate we expect e2 to be the major okay and sn2 to be the minor all right so now Secondary substrate with OR group that's not bulky, E2 is going to be the major, SN2 is going to be the minor. Alright, so now let's push arrows to show how E2 is formed. Again, you have to choose one of these better hydrogens, one of those, they're the same, both of them are sitting on metals, they're the same. So let's choose those and then obstruct those better hydrogens. Okay, talking about better hydrogens. So abstract one of those that you chose. It was a concerted reaction. So that so is it was a concerted reaction and also SN2. But let's draw E2 product first before we talk about SN2. Okay. Okay, the other product is gonna be sodium bromide. And of course, you're going to have a methanol on there once OCH3 accepts the hydrogen. Okay. Now, for the SN2 minor, it's just the same product. Let me draw it down here in blue. In green, I mean, let me draw it in green. So, if you have OCH3, and you're doing SN2, so it's just gonna be a back attack for this guy to leave. 
and you are ending up with a substitution product or CH3. So it's gonna be the minor here. All right? So that's how you know. Okay, nothing hard. You just have to understand the concept and if possible, memorize the rules. Next example. Okay, we still have an OR group here. Okay, this is an OR group. So it's a strong base, strong nucleophile, and the OET is not as bulky, it's not as bulky as a tert-butoxide, right? So it will go either E2 or SN2. But let's look at our substrate. Our substrate right now is a tertiary substrate. You cannot do a back attack because the back side here is hindered. S N2 is not gonna happen, okay? Because of sterics, it's hindered, so S N2 won't happen. You know, the only option we have is what we had was S N2 or E2 because of the strong nucleophile strong base. So if S N2 is not happening, we're going to expect only one product, and it's gonna come from the E2. So now that we've decided that, we need to show one of our beta hydrogens. You know, all these are methods. I'm just showing one hydrogen out of the set of the three hydrogens on each method for clarity reasons. Now let's push arrows and show how the E2 product is formed. So the base will accept that hydrogen this bond comes in is a concerted reaction again, and that leaves. So you're going to end up with this product plus ethanol because OET accepts the hydrogen, right? So you're going to get OETH, which is just ethanol. I'm using the red to show you that that hydrogen is this hydrogen here. And then the other product, BR left, you still have the sodium plus counter ion, so it's NABR. Okay, okay, again, this is E2. SN2 won't happen. SN2 competes with E2, but in this case, these guys are tertiary substrate is sterically hindered. Same story here. This is a tertiary substrate, it's sterically hindered. You still expect E2. But now we're going to follow a Z we're going to follow what's called Zsev rule. In Zsev rule, it tells you in a reaction where you're forming double bonds, the most substituted alkene is gonna be the major so let's show how we're going to get the most substituted and least substituted alkene and label the most substituted as the major but again we're going to go e2 only because sn2 won't happen because it's a tertiary substrate on the back side is terribly hindered now we're going to push our arrows at um, well before you push your arrows you want to show you have better hydrogens and I'm going to use color codes so you can see which beta hydrogens are the same okay so that's a better hydrogen that's a better hydrogen it's a hydrogen sitting on a carbon directly embodied to the carbon bearing the living group okay so it's a hydrogen sitting on a neighboring carbon to the carbon bearing the living group there's no other way to call it it's, that's the only way to call it so let's push arrows now to 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 form the ZF product the main the most substituted product you want to steal a hydrogen sitting on the most substituted carbon this carbon right here is bordered by two carbons while this carbon here is bordered by only one so this is a secondary carbon while this guy here is a primary carbon but overall this structure is a tertiary alkyl halide don't confuse okay so this is this is the most substituted carbon which should which if we of which when we steal its hydrogen we're going to get the most substituted alkene so as i said use your base to remove the hydrogen from a carbon that's from the beta carbon that's more substituted this bond goes in and then the halogen leaves 
So what you end up with is a dial bond right there and the halogen is gone. The halogen has to leave because you don't want to make the dial bond and still keep the bond to the halogen. You'll have five bonds around this carbon. That's so wrong, right? So this is going to be major. Okay, I'll tell you why that's major in just a moment again. But as still I told you, according to this variation that forms a double bond, should give you the double bond alkene. Should give you an, a double bond in an alkene that's more substituted. Now, it's possible for you to obstruct the, the better hydrogen from least substituted. Better carbon, which is either that hydrogen or this one here. Now, if the base chooses to do that, then you're going to end up with the least substituted alkene product option. All right, so this goes away and you're going to end up with this product. Okay. Right? So the minor here is going to be this. Now, let's go back to substitution of the alkene. This double bond only has one hydrogen across it. The smallest alkene, the smallest alkene should have four hydrogens across it. Okay? Smallest alkene has four hydrogens across it. Now, if this double bond here only one has has only has one hydrogen across it, that means three are missing. That means it's substituted three times. The other way to look at it is how many carbons are bonded directly to this double bond. This one, two, three. Again, it's tri substituted. So the major alkene is tri substituted. And the minor here, the number of carbons directly bonded to the double bond is one and two. Okay, so this is di substituted. Of course, tri substituted is more substituted. That makes it major. Now, if you want to look at it on by counting hydrogens, this double bond is missing four hydrogens with reference to the smallest alkene possible, which has four. So this is tri substituted, and this has two hydrogens across the double bond, so two are missing, so this is di-substituted. According to this rule, the major should be most substituted alkene, so this is the major. Next problem. This still is an OR group, but the thing is, it's so crowded. It's a bulky base. It's a bulky strong base. Bulky strong bases only, only perform E2 reactions like this guy and this is the only one that this is the most common bulky strong base you'll get in organic chemistry in this chapter it's gonna go E2 okay now it's bulky now if you look at the options you have for the better hydrogens it's gonna be that that and that now this guy of course you have two of them here you have three of them let me just show all of them Okay. This guy is so bulky, so it's hard for this bulky base to access the hydrogens right here, which are sitting on most substituted carbon, like we did. Like we did here, the base went for the hydrogen sitting on the most substituted better carbon. This base could do it because this base is not bulky, but on here, this base is bulky. So it cannot really go inside there to steal that hydrogen. That hydrogen is hidden within the structure. So it has to go for the outermost hydrogens because those are more accessible, right? These are more accessible. So it's going to go for one of these, either from this method or this method. It doesn't matter, but not on both of them. It has to go choose. It has to choose one to steal from. All right. Now the product it's gonna be this and this time this product is gonna be the major even though it's di substituted it's the major because this guy cannot access the inner 
better hydrogens to steal it to get the tri-substituted alkene product. This is a major and in fact, I would say comfortably it's going to be the only product. Okay? Because you used a bulky base as compared to here where the less bulky base is going to if, if the less bulky base is going to go for these inner hydrogens to get a tri-substituted product to get a tri-substituted product which is this okay you see that so this is bulky it's not going to go in there to steal like this tiny base did here instead it's going to go for the outside hydrogens to give you this disubstituted alkene which now is going to be the only product while up there it was the minor okay so choice of base and size of base is very important now now there are some complications with e2 reactions there is a rule called the anti-periplanar rule the anti-periplanar rule and just to illustrate if you are removing a better hydrogen the better hydrogen should be 180 degrees apart from the leaving group okay so if this is the better hydrogen and this is the leaving group they should be 180 degrees apart that's called anti periplanar positioning so if you have a base the base will come and obstruct this guy and that bond goes here and this goes to here you see it's an easy flow of pushing arrows downwards so you want the 180 degrees now if this better hydrogen is not oriented like this then it's not gonna work all right the other way to illustrate it to illustrate this for example let me use a ring if you have a better hydrogen there and you have a living group here this hydrogen is still 180 degrees in space because they have opposite wages now let's talk about that okay and this anti-periplanality is good so that you can have preferable orbital overlap and that goes deep into physical organic chemistry i'm not going to talk about that let's do examples to illustrate this now again this is a better carbon and that's a better carbon with reference to the carbon bearing the halogen so you want to show any better hydrogens that are on there now how do i know which wage to show if i already have a dash then i should draw the other type of base, the opposite of the dash if i have a wage then draw the hashed bond now out of these hydro better hydrogens a and b b is the one that is anti-periplanar to the living group that means the base is gonna go for b and not a okay so let's push arrows showing that rule in play so the base removes this hydrogen and then this bond is going to be used for my double bond in these leaves notice that the reaction has not happened on this other carbon up here so reaction did happen there so in your answer you need to show stereochemistry but when you're forming your double bonds please don't show the wages and the hash bonds okay you're just gonna lose your points for no good reason all right so I, as i said i'm keeping my stereochemistry up there the reaction did not happen there we just form our double bond we just formed our double bond here and since we have a methyl we're going to draw it this time not showing the 3d geometry because across the double bond is trigonal planar it's planar so you don't need to show the wages which imply towards and away so that's gonna be the major product why is this the major remember this is an or minus group and this is a secondary substrate e2 should dominate <coughs> in this case you see in this chart see whenever you have a secondary substrate and an or group then e2 is the major sn2 is the minor so let's draw the minor sn2 so the minor sn2 happens when this strong base strong nucleophile 
plays a role of strong nucleophile where you're attacking this guy and going, losing that Br. So the product will be, the substitution product will be OCH3 with inversion, because that's what SN2 does, goes with inversion. And you still show the other stereochemistries because the reaction did not happen elsewhere. The reaction didn't happen there, the reaction didn't happen here, only on that carbon. Again, this is a secondary substrate, and you have an OR minus group. The major should be E2, the minor should be SN2, like we did in the previous example. So an O minus group, this is a strong base, strong nucleophile. All right. So let it play a, a role of a base to give us E2, because eliminations always works with bases. Right, substitution always works with, nucle with nucleophiles, so we know this is a secondary substrate, we predict elimination to be major. Now to do that, we have to find our better hydrogens and make sure they are anti-periplanar to be used. Now one option of the hydrogen you have is here, it's equatorial down because you already have a metal up, and then on the other beta carbon, which is the carbon bonded directly to the carbon bearing the living group you have a hydrogen in blue now the question to you which hydrogen is 180 degrees apart a or b of course you said b because you can see this hydrogen is up axial up this is axial down so the base should go for b because that is showing anti-periplanality 180 degrees rule so this goes okay and this leaves all right i'm just going to draw the structure in 3d because it's hard for me to show the double bond on a chair so let me number the carbons one two three four five and six and i'm going to draw 2D instead of 3D, put my double bond there. Double bond is formed between carbon 1 and 6. So 1, uh, 1 and 6. So number the other carbons. So on carbon, on carbon 6, you have an ethyl group. So show my ethyl. On carbon 2, you have a methyl group. Okay, show your method. Now, because one is up, the other one is down, we need to define stereochemistry. Because the metal is up, we're going to give it a wage. And because the ethyl is down, we need to give it a dash bond. Okay? And that's going to be your product for E2. Now, for SN2, we can comfortably draw the chair to illustrate that. For SN2, we can comfortably draw the chair to illustrate the structure because you're not forming a double bond within the structure. Okay. You know, SN2 leads to inversion. So suppose E2 didn't happen here ignore the arrows in red so let's use this the arrow in blue then you'll be attacking that carbon and this leaves attacking from opposite the br so this och3 should be equatorial up why because the br is axial down that's inversion okay all right so those sn2 is going to be the minor because these are secondary substrate. Next example. On here, you have an OR minor group, right? So you don't expect to have E2 reaction. Even though these are secondary substrate, you expect that the E2 will be the major, SN2 will be the minor. But 
the problem is these beta hydrogens here are not 180 degrees apart compared to the living group. They have the same bond type, so you cannot obstruct them. So instead, the only product that you're going to see, the, the only product is going to be SN2. It's going to be formed by SN2 because E2 competes with SN2 anyway. And this is a secondary substrate. It's not hindered like what you get in tertiary substrates. So the product is going to be this with no E2 reaction. Show your inversion. So we draw a wedge to OCH3. Of course, the living group is Br minus, and you have the counter ion Na plus. So remember, no E2 because the enter periplanar rule is not obeyed. Okay. So you only see SN2. Next question. Now, whenever you have H minus, a hydride. Whenever you have a hydride, which mostly comes from sodium hydride as a source, or DBN, those are bases only. You expect E2. Remember, substitution happens whenever you have nucleophiles, but these are bases only. So this is simple. You just need to, so this is simple. You just need to remove your better hydrogen that leaves because you're expecting only E2. So you get hydrogen gas and you're going to get sodium borohydride. Where did hydrogen gas come from? The H minus and the beta hydrogen forms H and a H that's hydrogen right. gas. All right? DBN is gonna use one of its nitrogens. That's the structure of DBN here. It's gonna use one of its larger nitrogens, most likely the sp3 hydro nitrogen to remove a better hydrogen that comes in here and that leaves again you only get the E2 product yeah. so again the, the DBN can use this to get the hydrogen I just this is just short form of writing this big ring okay on here You have a better hydrogen there, a beta hydrogen there. Uh, you want to follow ZSEV rule and you're going E2. So you move a hydrogen, beta hydrogen that's sitting on the most saturated carbon, which is this carbon. That leaves. So you're going to get a tri substituted alkene. How will the minor form? How will the minor form? The minor forms when the beta hydrogen is removed from the least substituted beta carbon which is this pushing arrows and that's how you get that product so we did one example that shows that the bulky bases can lead to least substituted products as a major or only product because uh, they are bulky. They don't go from the they don't go for the beta hydrogen sitting on the most substituted carbon. Okay, so in this part, I'm going to describe. In this part, I'm going to describe why least substituted alkenes become the major only products whenever using bulky bases like tert-butoxide. Like tert-butoxide. So let's push arrows again. This is bulky. You have two choices of better hydrogen. So you either gonna remove this hydrogen or this one of this hydrogen. Now, because this guy is bulky, it should go for the one that's more accessible, which is this. Okay, and that leaves, and your product will definitely look like this. Remember, you do have a hydrogen there. Don't show stereochemistry on the sp2 carbon, right? Okay, so that is the product. It's gonna be the my the major. The minor 
is if this guy really can go for that hydrogen which i doubt the miner will be will be this even though this guy is die substituted and this is mono substituted this becomes a minor why because this is a bulky strong base the bulkness causes that so it causes the hoffman product to be major and not the z itself the z itself becomes the minor not as we said earlier on in the lectures we started next example again this is bulky so it should go for the most accessible better hydrogen and not this and not that because those are sitting on more substituted carbon these are primary carbon right and the hoffman product which will be the major will be that hoffman product why hoffman because it's less substituted compared to the other option that you'll get whenever you abstract this to lose the chloride to get a tri-substituted ring. Now we've talked so much about SN2 and E2. Now let's get into details about judging when you can get SN1 and E1. Now this is a weak base. What is a weak base? Weak nucleophile. As I said in this slide, we're going just to compare in this session, this last bit of lecture, we're going to talk about how to decide whether you're going SN1 or E1 majorly because you're going to use weak nucleophiles and weak bases. Okay? So weak nucleophile, most likely SN1. Weak base, most likely E1 and not E2. Now, the first step, now that we know okay the first thing you need to the second the other thing you need to know is to judge whether what type of substrate you have this is a secondary alkyl halide so you are looking at the middle line and it gives you a lot of mixtures there but i don't expect you to see sn2 and e2 most likely sn1 is gonna win unless you're using sulfuric acid if this was OH okay so let's go with SN1 so first thing the BI is going to leave okay the BR leaves because the determining step is formation of carbocation for SN1 and E1 Obviously, you see this is a secondary carbocation. We need to check and make sure we can make it tertiary. In this case, yes. Just do a H1 to H shift. All right. And by doing that, well, you know you, you have a hydrogen there. By doing that, you are moving the second hydrogen there and the plus charge goes there. Just like swapping positions between that hydrogen, which is this, and the plus sign. Now, these guys are tertiary carbocation. Why is it a tertiary carbocation? The C plus is now bordered by three other carbon. Here, the C plus is bordered by two carbons. That's why it's secondary. All right. So now your H2O is more than happy to come and do the attack and it could do it from the top or from the bottom so assume it's doing it from the top you're going to end up with stereochemistry going on there okay. if you're adding it from the bottom then the metal is going to be fleshed flushed up the existing metal group is going to be flushed up okay and then you finish this reaction by proton transfer that means you're transferring the extra hydrogen in your molecule to 
a water molecule which is within the solvent okay so proton transfer for both of these enantiomers and then you're going to end up with the racemic mixture and that's why i started by saying sn1 ends up giving more can get ends up giving you racemic mixtures or can end up giving you racemic mixtures and sn2 gives you one product anyway in this case these two carbons that carbon and that carbon is not asymmetric so there's no need to show the wages so typically technically this one we don't expect it to give us an antiomass of product it's just gonna give us one product because there's no any asymmetric carbon in the structure why is this carbon not asymmetric you have an ethyl and an ethyl no need to show wages so that's gonna be the major sn1 product now because we're going sn1 as decided before you can end up with a mixture because of carbocation rearrangement so if this guy just decides to get attacked by water after proton transfer the product should have an oh right here and this time you're going to have an antiomas all right these two guys are gonna be the minor products why because they are formed from the minor carbocation the least stable carbocation before the shift okay next example all right same story here that's a weak base weak nucleophile so they expect it to go sn1 or e1 but because you are not heating i'm not seeing e1 dominating sn1 will dominate Two hydrogens are there. This is tertiary carbocation. Is the most stable. Now instead of water, we are adding methanol, but the same same process that water would have gone through. Same mechanism. Okay. This molecule is symmetrical. I'm not gonna show that up and down addition. Okay. All right. And then after proton transfer, another molecule of methanol coming to steal that hydrogen. That's the transfer from this molecule to that molecule. That's a transfer. After proton transfer, you end up with an ether from SN1, and that's going to be the major. Where do you get the minor? The minor will be if this guy gets attacked by methanol. Okay. After proton transfer, this should be the structure. So OCH3 will end up there. And that's going to be the minor. Right? Good. Now at least let's do one e1 let's assume we have heating here it still goes through the same process as sn1 i told you e1 are very rare that's why i don't insist on those much so you get a tertiary carbocation anyway and then your ch3 oh when you have the ch3 oh and you want to go e1 because we are heating that tends to show more of e1 products you want to show in this case you want to show your beta hydrogen so let's assume this guy is doing elimination that means this taking the role of a base because you want eliminated products so obstruct that beta hydrogen if you do that you're going to get a tri substituted alkane So based on ZSEV rule, this is going to be major. All right. Let's show the other options. So what if you have this same carbocation? It's already tertiary, no need for shifts. 
doing the same reaction. Okay, the other byproduct is just um, alkoxonium that is formed whenever methanol accepts the better hydrogen. Now let's obstruct this other better hydrogen possible. If it chooses to go that way, then you're going to get the first minor product. With this time your double bond outside. This is disubstituted. Okay? And that's why it's a that's why it's a minor compared to compared to the tri substituted according to this rule this rule wants you to form products akin products that are more substituted all right now of course you have another type of better hydrogen down there so we're going to steal it okay again we are assuming we are going e1 because of the heat that we just added so we're going to remove that better hydrogen methanol acts as a base and you're going to end up with this product all right now try substituted all right so that's i say this is a major it's try substituted this is also tri substituted so this is a competing major also so if you say that or that is a major you're still correct because both of them are tri substituted all right i think that concludes it so it was a long lecture but again that's because there's just so much to explain all right so you keep practicing this practice that makes it perfect never easy all right Bye.